right, so I decided to go ahead and put the, uh, uh, what do they call it? The plug for the water pump on. So if you have a turbo, this is what you would use for a turbo. So I got the water pump. I went ahead and put this on. And I said, well, I'm just going to double check. That's not a closed off one. Yeah, that's closed off. So, that's the one they sent me. So that's for a turbo model. So, I'll just reuse this one. I would assume that they're the same. I'll just take that, put that in there. I'll clean this up. And I'll just reuse that. But that really kind of upsets me. Why would they do that? Because I'm pretty sure I didn't order, order a turbo pump. I mean, even though it's the same pump, but yeah. Um, let's see. What else did I do? Oh, I got the belt guide on. And I got the roller on. I got the roller and the belt tension, the timing belt. All good. Good slack there. So uh, the next step will be the the balance shaft belt. So I started this, but I wanted to show you this. Um, so I am taking off the flywheel lock because I'm going to put the balance shaft belts on. Uh, and in order to do that, I need to be able to move the crank. So I know I'm in top dead center. So what I did was I marked the crank. So when I move this, um, I know I get it back to top dead center. So, um, I just put a little piece of tape on it. Um, some people use paint. I'll just take the tape off when I'm done. But that way I know that I'll, I'll be a top dead center on this as well. Okay. Balance shaft belt is on. So. That is right on. I don't know if you can see it or not. That is right on. <clears throat> that one is right on. My tape is marked, is lined up. <clears throat> and I also checked the OT mark in there. So everything should be perfectly timed and tensioned. So that is that. So now we'll just crank it over a few times and, uh, or crank it by hand and make sure nothing seizes up and I know it'll be done so before I uh, start cranking it I forgot I got to put the uh, idler pulley on um, so you'll notice I got a feeler gauge there that needs to be half a millimeter gap in between the belt and the pulley and then this is supposed to be just just touching barely the belt it's supposed to bow out 0 0.1 millimeters so um as you can see it can still spin i need just to tighten it down um but yep i think that'll be good all right so uh cranked everything by hand uh nothing bound up um Probably went around three or four times just to make sure. Uh, and all the marks lined up again perfectly. Uh, so I think I'm good. I mean, I don't know what else I could check. I think all the belts are good and all the timing is perfect. So everything lines up. It moves. It doesn't seize up. It doesn't bind up. So, yeah, we will uh, we'll keep putting stuff together. Okay, so there were little rubber boot things on there, um, and they were just, one was gone almost completely. The other one was just completely cracked, and these are all corroded and everything. So I am going to replace those 
with these. And this is my new fan switch. And then they, they do fit on. I'm not going to be able to get that on with one hand. And then I'm just going to take some shrink wrap and shrink it right around the end here. Uh, not as good as what was originally on there, but better than no boot at all. So, uh, yep, we're going to do that. All right, just another little update. Fan shroud is back in. Everything's connected. I cleaned the contacts. Uh, that hose is in. This coolant hose is in. I still got to put the upper radiator hose in. And then I just, for right now, I decided to just use those wires and just hook them up. And let's see if it gets going. Maybe I'll just heat shrink those to the switch. I'm not 100% sure yet. But instead of trying to cut it all apart and everything, then maybe that's what I'll just do. Um, but we'll have to wait and see and see if it turns on. Um, but, yeah. So, I think, I think we are good to go. I uh, just got to get that upper upper radiator hose on and I think we can try turn it over I got to put the, some of the inside back together because I mean that's still all apart so I'll have to put hook up the ignition and uh, hook up some of the gauges but I think we're good moving along okay I think everything is back together I know the accessories belt I know I'm gonna have to take that back off to put the covers back on but I uh, two things I wanted to wait to see and make sure the belts and everything are running fine. And second, I ordered those, uh, I ordered bolts for the bottom belt cover. Um, one of them was shorter than the other. Don't know exactly why, um, but it wouldn't catch. So I just ordered two new ones and they actually just came in. Uh, so it's the first time I ordered from 944 store. Um, they had free shipping, so I was in no great rush for these, um, and their prices were about the same as the other people just for these two bolts, so, um, since it was free shipping, I said, <clears throat> that's fine, and it took about six days for it to get here. Um, but I think everything is on, so, a couple of things I figured out as I was doing this. These hoses, put your hoses on before you put the fan shroud in. It was really difficult to work in this area and I'm hoping, and I'm pretty sure I did, get that on far enough. I didn't want to be twisting and turning and everything, trying to get that on and snap that off, but uh, it would have been easier had I not put the fans in first. Then I would have been able to get to it easier from the bottom. There just isn't a whole lot of room to work. So if you're replacing the hoses and you take the fans out, make sure you put the hoses back on first. I was thinking that it would be easier to get the fans in without the hoses in the way, which it probably is. But it probably was more work trying to get this hose on with the fans in. And I probably would put this hose on first, then put this hose on. So... Um, yeah, so I'll replace those bolts, and then I've got to go. I'm just going to fill it with some distilled water for right now. I'm not worried about antifreeze. I wanted to flush the system anyway, so uh, that's kind of two birds with one stone kind of thing. Um, and I think we are all put together up front. So we are good to go as soon as I put those other bolts in. I just wanted to show, I, I don't know why, but as you can see, that bolt is shorter. And it's not supposed to be. It's, it's the same size bolt for both locations. So, I don't know why that, if that snapped off, if it's inside the engine. I hope not, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, so, it's kind of weird. Because I took the other long bolt that I have actually in the car and I put it into both holes and it went in both holes. So that isn't stuck in the threads because if it was, that wouldn't be able to seat all the way. So I don't know. So I'm just replacing both bolts. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> that turn signal works. So I got the battery hooked up, got the starter put in, got everything in front. It's interesting that turn signal is on. Unless... Ah, I had my hazards on. So, all right. Uh, I think I'm going to put this on the tripod. Get the fire extinguisher ready. Okay. Well, hopefully I got everything where it's supposed to be. We're going to see. that up a little bit we're gonna try it again all right so we loosened up the auxiliary belt or the accessory belt try that again Reason it's running maybe a little rough. I gotta plug up the brake booster. Let's try that. <laughs> 